Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Delve. Today we continue to construct our clone about vegetation versus the undead. Last time we continued working on adding more plants to our clone, we added the ice shroom, the jalapeno, the cherry bomb, potato mine, and the chomper. All went according to plan until my internet went out, breaking GameMaker in the process and forcing us to call it quits earlier than expected. So today we pick up from there. We'll get the chopper working right and then move on to adding even more of those unique plants to our ever-growing plant army. And fingers crossed, hope that the internet holds up this time. So that's the plan, let's get to the coding. Now, if you remember, last time we had two issues with the chomper. The first being we weren't able to just target one zombie with our collision line code. And the second issue being resetting the state didn't always work. So to fix the first issue, I had to, well, for the first time in Let's Dev history, seek out code from an external source. Thanks to GMLScripts.com, I was able to find a script that would allow me to target a single object in a collision line, even when multiples of the same object are touching said line. The script uses math to set up a perimeter based on the arguments provided, and then executes two collision line checks. It then determines the positioning for the target objects within those checks, and returns whichever is closest to the first point. In our case, that would be the plant calling the script. In other words, this will make sure that the first zombie to enter the chopper's bite distance is gobbled up, and any other zombies in or on the way are ignored. Admittedly, I'd love to have figured this one out for myself, but I don't think I would have been able to get the math right. So huge thanks to GML Scripts and the author of the script. Moving on, our reset issue with the chopper was an easy fix. I reverted back to the old state system, and this time, I added the golden key that would fix our entire issue, actually resetting the state timer. This slight oversight is what kept our chopper from working properly last time. And so now that our chopper was finally fixed and working properly, we could get back to adding even more plants to the game. And next up on the list was the Torchwood. The Torchwood only exists to buff pea shooter bullets. The burning log literally sets pea shooter bullets on fire, giving them a damage buff. Other than that, well, uh, they've got that menacing hot-headed look going for them, I guess. Anyway, uh, this meant that the plant needed no extra code. Instead, we had to check for a collision with the pea shooter bullets. When the torch wood comes in contact with a bullet, if it's not already on fire, we set the pea shooter bullet on fire. And just to hammer this home visually, I added a conditional to draw a fire sprite if the bullet is on fire. And given how simple this code was, had this not gone exactly as planned, I may have set my computer on fire. But luckily, it worked out perfectly and my computer was spared a fiery demise. Which meant that we could move on to our next plant, the squash. The squash is pretty simple. When a zombie comes within a certain distance of it, the squash leaps into the air, slamming itself down onto the opposing zombie, smashing both it and itself into oblivion. So before even checking for the zombies, I wanted to get the stop animation timed right. Going with the same code we used for the butter toss made creating the squash's hop effect much easier. With a bit of tweaking, I was able to get a nice vicious hop down, and so in came the check for the zombie. And once again, using our collision script here meant that we only smashed one particular zombie. And since I'm doing this from memory, I don't exactly remember if the squash takes out more than one zombie at a time, but we can easily change that later if necessary. So with the squash now added, we could move on to our next plant. And in an interesting twist, it somewhat combines everything we've been doing thus far. I am of course talking about the scaredy shroom. The scaredy shroom acts like a pea shooter, firing a constant wave of bullets across the map. However, when a zombie gets too close, this plant burrows into the floor, becoming completely inactive until the coast is clear. So, not only is this plant going to require states, it'll also require our projectile code to run in its default state. Checking for zombies using a collision line a tile wide, the shroom switches to its inactive state when a zombie enters that line of sight. I also tried tying the state to the image index to give it a better visual, but as you can see, it didn't fully work. In fact, testing brought up a few issues. First, I noticed I couldn't immediately reset the cooldown for the scary shroom, especially if I wanted it to constantly switch between states. I had to make the cooldown a conditional so that the state switching got priority over reloading. 
The second issue I ran into was the zombies suddenly noticing scary shrooms that were previously hiding. Despite removing their threat in the inactive state, it didn't seem to do a thing. After some poking around, I noticed I hadn't checked for a plant's threat level during the zombies eat state. Doing so solved the issue of zombies eating shrooms they technically shouldn't be seeing. And that whole image index not updating thing? Yeah, that was thanks to my dry vent defaulting to zero for image indexes. A simple oversight considering I had never had to account for image indexes until now. And with that, one plant was now fixed and three new plants were added to our clone. Sadly, I didn't have much time for this session and so I had to cut things a little short. However, we're about to enter an interesting new phase for our plants and zombies. So this actually works out. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.